Game, presented by Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Tonight, the Hall of Fame brings you Walt Disney and his gang. Yes, they're all here. Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Hello. Hello. The Three Little Pigs. Everybody. Pluto the pup. Woo, woo, woo. Clara Cluck. <laughs> Donald Duck. Wee, wee, wee. And all the others. And here's the original Silly Symphony Orchestra in a medley of Silly Symphony tunes featuring the voices of the original characters. First, the three little pigs and the song which swept the world. <laughs> Nothing but a nothing, a nothing. 
nothing, a nothing, you're nothing but a nothing, you're not a thing at all. To be a bat's a bum thing, a silly and a dumb thing, at least a bat is something, you're not a thing at all. Pigs might say, who's afraid of the big bad wind? Who's afraid of the old hard water? Who's afraid of pots and pans, dishes, mops and brooms? Wind, weather, housework. Defy them with Heinz, Honey and Almond Creek. No matter how windy or cold the weather gets, or how much housework you have to do, you'll never have to worry about rough, red, chapped hands again if you use Heinz regularly. It's almost magical the way Heinz makes raw, sore hands stop hurting and starts right in to heal the most painful cracks. Let the children use Heinz on their chapped faces and hands and on their red, raw knees when they come in out of the cold. Heinz eases the drawn, dry feeling that makes the skin burn when children come indoors. You know when children's hands are rough and chapped, dirt gets ground in and the skin looks grimy no matter how thoroughly it's scrubbed. But if their hands are softened and healed by Heinz, it will save a lot of unnecessary suffering, and they'll be easier to keep clean. Hand lotion pads come and go, but for 60 years, women have looked upon Heinz as the one dependable protection against chatting, the tried and proved way to keep hands smooth and lovely, even in the bitterest weather. For in addition to its healing balms, Heinz also contains cosmetic ingredients, which beautify the skin and keep it young-looking. And now, it is my privilege to introduce the personality behind all of the world-beloved Mickey Mouse and Silly Symphony. Ladies and gentlemen, Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Whoa! Thanks, gang. Hello, everybody. How'd you like to be the father of my family at Christmas time? I mean, did you ever try to pick out a Christmas necktie for a horse? <laughs> or rubber boots for a young duck? <laughs> Don't worry, Donald. You'll get your boots. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> Bless his heart. Well, we'll hear from him later in the program. <laughs> oh, Donald. Nice, not yet. Nice little fellow. Now, our program tonight is to be a surprise party. It's the gang's Christmas present for... Donald, put it down. I told you not to bring that pop gun to the studio. Yes, you. And don't point it at people. <laughs> boys will be boys. Yes, the gang has gotten up the entire program by themselves. They've named it, quite appropriately, the Christmas stocking. And each one of them has put a surprise for us, Donald, in the stocking. Don put it down. <laughs> Donald, don't point that gun at Clara Clark. <laughs> Why, if it went off accidentally, you'd, you'd hit her. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Give it to him, Clara. <laughs> you bet she wants to fight. Sing him, Clara. Let him up, Claire. You win. That's enough. <laughs> you, you got just what you deserve. Shame on you. And if you hit anyone else with that gun, I'll break it right over my knee. Yes. Donald, give me that gun. Give it here. So you don't think I meant it. Well, I'll show you. There, let that be a lesson to you. And from now on, I want you to be a good duck. Say, Mr. Disney to you, Donald. Donald, just one more word out of you and I'll call the boogeyman. How? Why, I'll just clap my hands three times and they'll pop right out at you. Okay, I warned you. Here goes.
I guess we got rid of Donald Duck for a while. And now, Miss Minnie Mouse will take the first surprise from our Christmas stocking. Here she is. <laughs> Donald, where'd you come from? Well, what do you want now? No, Donald, not now. Wait for your turn. Donald, give me those bells. Oh, I don't want to fight. But if I hear any more out of you, I'll sell you back to Joe Penner. Well, there goes Donald, and here comes Minnie. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Minnie, I hear you have a big surprise for us in the Christmas stocking. Uh-huh. Open your mouth and shut your eyes. Oh, no, not with Donald in the studio. Just tell us what the big surprise is. <laughs> it's my two little birds, Jenny Wren and Cock Robin. Are they going to sing for us? Uh-huh. <laughs> Minnie's going to play the violin while her two birds, Cock Robin and Jenny Wren, sing the love duet from their new silly symphony, Who Killed Cock Robin? And I might mention that this is our first mystery thriller. We defy you to guess who killed him. In fact, if you even suspect who killed Cock Robin, we'll give you, well, we'll give you Donald Duck. All ready, Minnie? Uh-huh. Wait till I give my birds a tip. Down to red, Jenny, then. Hey, no, no. Higher, Jenny, higher. <laughs> That's right, precious. Come on, Cock Robin. Hop up on Minnie's violin. Get your pit. Listen. Oh, that's perfect. All right. I'm sure your little birds will be a sensation on the screen. Oh, thank you, Rob. And while we're on the subject of pictures, I suppose you know that from now on, all of Mickey's pictures will be in Technicolor. <laughs> and will Mickey's pants be red? <laughs> yes, indeed. And I think it's about time his face was red, too. Let's get him up here to the microphone. All right. Yoo-hoo. Oh, Mickey. Come on and bring your pig. Okay, Minnie. Suey, suey, suey. Hello. <laughs> I got a surprise. Many birds are okay, but I got something better than that. Wait till you... Hey, wait till you hear my singing pig. First, I gotta get them in pitch. <laughs> well, that's good enough. We ain't so particular, Minnie. Presenting Mr. and Mrs. Patty Pig. <laughs> Mickey, that was beautiful. Oh, he ain't heard nothing. Hand me that bucket of frogs, Minnie. Huh? Here it is. Oh, he's <laughs> afraid of frogs. I'll catch him. I got one. Hold him, Walt. Yeah. <laughs> Steady, boy. <laughs> is there a blotter in the house? Hey, where's my tree frog? <laughs> Here he is, Mickey. <laughs> Thanks, Goofy. Introducing the Mill Pond Brothers. Purple, purple, and purple. 
<laughs> Must have been something yet. <laughs> well, here they are. Well, the old songs are always best. But let's see what the orchestra can do with a brand new tune called Heidi Hades from a silly symphony, The Goddess of Spring. Forgive our enemies. 
And I want you to call the big bad wolf on the phone and wish him a Merry Christmas. I wouldn't feel safe unless it was a long-distance call, sir. No, no, that's not the Christmas spirit. The poor wolf is down and out, friendless, and he's hungry. Uh -oh. What's more, the big wolf, the big bad wolf, is a fellow actor. He's always given the best he had to the cause of Grandma. Oh, Grandma, what big eyes you've got. <laughs> I'm serious about this, Pig. Really, I am. I'll dial his number, and you wish him a Merry Christmas. Hello? 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 the same foolish little pig. They'll never learn. Holy mackerel, what's that? <laughs> oh, Donald, for heaven's sake, stop it. Terrible. And anyway, the three pigs have just finished singing that. I'm sorry, Donald, you're too late. No jingle bells. And now, here's a real surprise. Grand opera. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with the greatest pleasure that I unveil the All-American Opera, written especially for this broadcast by Miss Minnie Mouse. <laughs> the principals will be Princess Leonora, sung by the Barnyard Nightingale, Madam Clara Clark. The role of Don Tebico will be sung by Pluto the Pup. And Manrico, the Duke of Lysol, will be sung by Donald Duck. All right, overture. Our scene is a moonlit garden. It is spring. On a balcony overlooking the garden stands Leonora. She is in love, deeply in love. She sighs. She stretches out her arms. The moonlight has enchanted her. A song of love is on her lips. <laughs> Leonora stops. She sees one of her lovers approaching. It is Manrico, the Duke of Lysol. <laughs> Leonora greets Manrico. Other lover, Don Pedico. <laughs> Shoving Manrico aside, Don Pedico pours out his heart. words lead to blows. The lovers draw their swords. They come together. It is a battle to the death. Manrico and Don Pebico both fall to the ground. 
mortally wounded. Leonora rushes to the ground beside them. She realizes that she has lost both her lovers. So she takes out a vial of poison and drinks it. <laughs> then she tries to revive the lovers so they can all die together. She bathes their wounds with Heinz honey and almond cream. They open their eyes. They see fair Leonora sinking to the ground. She is breathing her last. Her heart is pounding. All three are dead, but they struggle to their feet and sing as they have never sung before. She was trying so hard to reach that high note, and she laid a neg. Wishing you all a merry, merry Christmas. We hope you've enjoyed this broadcast of Mickey Mouse and the other famous Disney characters. Screenland Magazine is offering prizes in a contest of letters telling why you like Mickey Mouse. You'll find all of the details of the contest in the February issue of Screenland Magazine, which is now on the newsstands. <laughs> The Hall of Fame is presented by the makers of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream, which throughout the bitterest weather keeps hard-working hands smooth and comfortable, lovely to look at and thrilling to touch. Next week, the Hall of Fame brings a return engagement of those two celebrated personalities of the screen, Charlie Ruggles and Mary Bowler. The Hall of Fame has come to you from the NBC studios in Hollywood. John McIntyre speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company.